the 675 LT and today is particularly special. Right at this moment, I am on an official McLaren photo shoot. So it's not just me going off on my own doing things. I've gone out, I've got Soto Zero tires fitted on the LT so I could use it all year round. But the trigger for that, the reason they were applied in the first place, was because McLaren invited me along to a winter drive and photo shoot. And the idea is that between myself and Mark in the 570 GT, we're trying to see who can get our cars the dirtiest. <laughs> now that isn't exactly the direct brief for what's happening right now. The main story is that you can use these cars all year round. So we thought, where can we go to find somewhere that's almost certainly gonna be pretty groggy, grimy, wet, potentially snow, and still really enjoy these cars? Well, the original idea was Scotland, but upon looking on the webcams in the area in Scotland where you can go skiing, there was no snow. So we thought there's no real point in going up there when you can get similar set up and so we decided to head out to the Yorkshire Dales now we have landed ourselves in some thick fog there is more dirt on the road right now that I could possibly I'm not sure if it's the right thing to say that I could possibly want for um, but with the whole idea of today being a demonstration that come wind rain or shine you can use these cars all year round the 570 GT is currently off and driving about somewhere so I'm about to catch up with him we're gonna get some back-to-back uh, -back driving experiences with that car and this car to see what they're all about on roads like this which are fabulous and incredibly tight and wet the idea is let's have some official McLaren fun let's hit it Okay, bit of an unusual stop this. We've just uh, decided to leave the high up hills of the Yorkshire Dales because the fog was just getting too thick. So we've gone down the road, downhill, and it's thankfully started to clear up, but for our next photo shoot location, as I'm sure you've guessed, we've come to this uh, really old school train station. But what is significant is that it was where a scene in Harry Potter was filmed. So this is actually the train station where they arrive when they reach Hogwarts, which is pretty cool. But as much as I love Harry Potter, particularly at Christmas, <laughs> um, yeah, today is all about cars. So yeah, let's go check out this shoot, see what's what. This is really cool. It's weird being in a left-hand drive car immediately hopping out of a right-hand drive car, but this is great. So the last time that I was in the 570 GT, I was literally driving up the side of a volcano in Tenerife, 30 degree heat, and it was pristine and fantastic. But this for me, 
this is the real test. I mean, we have actively hunted out the worst weather that we can possibly find. Again, the whole reason behind this is that I'm a big believer that you can and should use supercars all year round. And we were like, do you know what? Middle of December, Yorkshire Moors, it's not going to be pleasant. And sure enough, it isn't. We fitted these both of these cars with, with some great tyres and now we are ready to tackle this bad boy head on. So, how does this feel? Well, of course, the 570 GT compared with the 570S is a little bit more of a softer car. Obviously, a little bit more practicality with having a boot in the back there. But what's cool about today is we have both extremes, well, almost both extremes of the McLaren range. 570 GT is part of the Sport Series. The 675 LT is top of the Super Series. Let's exclude P1 for now because, well, let's face it, it's not a totally different stratosphere. So focusing on this car, the very first thing that you pick up on immediately is the fact that it is just really soft. <laughs> I mean, this road surface, there's lots of mini undulations, there's bumps, and the LT is fantastically well dampened for the kind of car it is. We have to remember, it, it is a bit more of a track-focused car, even though on the road it is mind-blowing. This is through and through a road car, as the GT moniker suggests. It is hinted towards more of, of a Grand Tourer, and it is just a lot more chilled out. I mean, even having this pano roof, that for me is one of the best features of the GT. My personal favourite out of the sports series range is the S. That's mostly from a dynamic point of view. I just prefer how the S feels. It's just got a better front end turn in and it's just a generally a sharper car. But that's not the point. This isn't pretending to be an S with a boot. It's an all round more chilled out car. Now, if you look at the extremes of the cars we're driving today, that is highlighted so much more by jumping from the LT and like immediately into this. The interior is very much more catered towards a more refined driving experience. Now I'm just gonna go on this. See that left-hander there? All day in the LT, it's been grinding out. So the front skid plate, it's always just been tapping the ground. GT skims over that no problem. Obviously from stock, from factory setup, this car has a higher ride height, which, you know, all supercars have that inconvenience of a low ride height. The LT, it's the lowest car that I've ever owned. So when I drove the GT last in Tenerife, my only criticism with it at that time was the front end felt a little bit soft. The rack on this, the steering rack isn't as sharp. Now, obviously for the majority of your daily drives, which this very much is, you could very, very easily drive this car every single day. And just look, going over for those bumps, it just absorbs and glides them with a lot more finesse than the LT. Now I guess it very much depends on what you like out of your drive. So if you want something that is particularly hardcore and a very eventful experience, the LT is gonna take it every single time. But the GT, without doubt, it's an easier car to live with every single day. What I do love about the LT is the fact that the steering rack, for all of its problems when you're going slow, the fact that a three-point turn turns into a six-point turn, it is beautiful when you start to flow. When you get the LT up to speed, that thing, you can just cross your wrists around most corners and it's just gone. The GT has a lot more luck, which means I can actually turn around in a road like that. I mean, being an LT owner, that maneuver that I just made there is novel. It's nigh on impossible. So yeah, th that just pretty much highlights that this is so much more of a daily car. However, when you eventually get it back onto tight twisty roads like this, it doesn't have the same stunning turn in. It doesn't have the same feedback, which I'm surprised at because this is one of the few modern day cars which has retained a hydraulic steering rack. But ultimately, and I keep coming back around to this no matter what car I drive, you know, does it put a smile on your face? And the answer, most definitely is yes. I mean, it doesn't hang around this thing. Interestingly, both the LT 
and this 570 GT are both fitted with Pirelli Sato 03s. They are the latest variation on Pirelli's winter bias tyre. And while the LT has got so much grip, even with that tyre, because the 570 GT runs on a narrower profile tyre, it's actually, surprisingly, a more playful car. You can really get this thing out. It's really nice. I recently borrowed a 570S, and after a few days with that car, I did question, you know, what more do you really need out of a supercar? That thing absolutely was a phenomenal few days in a car that we interpret as being the sort of baby McLaren. But the key word there is McLaren. Forget the baby bit. This car and the 570S punch so far above its weight, it's crazy. And the fact that McLaren offer a car that takes the majority of the elements of the S and packages it in a car which is a bit more friendly for daily use, and the fact that you've got the practicality of being able to throw bags in the back, yeah, I mean, it's so compelling. If you are in the market for something like this, very hard to ignore it. conditions that we could drive these cars in. The aim of the game has just been just thrash them and enjoy them and just saturate yourself in the fact that you can use these cars all year round no matter the weather. Coming up to Yorkshire we've had three seasons in a day. You've seen it. We've had incredible sunshine, we've had fog, we've had wind, we've had rain. It's been a great experience though and I think I can speak for both myself and Mark who's been driving the uh, 570 GT that we derive this strange pleasure from getting these cars covered in dirt. I don't know what it is. I'm not sure if it feels like you're getting your money's worth or, or what, but uh, yeah, I just thrive off actually using cars. I get infinitely greater joy from using them, learning their characteristics, hearing the sound, seeing how it feels. Since we've swapped tires, obviously I spent a season uh, on the Trofeo R's, which has been an amazing tire. The conditions right now, I mean, these tires, these Soto Zeros have just given me so much more confidence to exploit this car. And for me, a massive part of owning these cars is how it heightens your sense of adventure. Now, don't get me wrong, you can drive these roads in any car you want, but as humans, we are a sensory receptive vessel and getting in a car like this just heightens the sense of excitement when you're driving along an already really exciting road to be doing it in something like the LT or the 570 GT. It's just such a heightened sensory experience. I love it. So is there a conclusion of the day? I think overall, I can't believe how much fun I've, we've managed to extrapolate out of these cars in as such adverse weather conditions. It's been an example that, you know, don't park your car in the garage, get out and drive it. And also, it's highlighted to me that if you set these cars up right, namely tyres, you can just go out and use them all year round. Now, I know they are, by convention, they are very special cars, but ultimately, they are still cars. And by that token, it's really important to just get out and drive. And on that note, thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you next time. Ciao! Woo-hoo-hoo! <laughs>